Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to welcome to something a little bit different, you know, I used to do uh, sort of real life newsy videos uh, when it came to F1, uh, quite a lot, you know, the, the, the state of F1 videos, maybe previews to a season, predictions for drivers and stuff for a next season, but I haven't done one in quite a while, so I just thought I'd, you know, I'd mix it up a little bit and do one, and I want to know what your feedback is when you've watched the video, I want to know whether you, you guys want me to do this on a more regular basis, or whether you, you're not so keen, you know, because people like Alex Zafro, Mr. Danger Days, Channel Vlogs do it quite a lot, or whatever, just let me know in the comment section when you've watched the video, obviously don't do it now, but when you've watched the video, just let me know what your feedback is. Uh, for those guys that are wondering where F1 2016 videos are, they will return literally tomorrow, there's a, there's a Monaco career video going up tomorrow it's an incredible race you cannot miss it one of the best races I've ever had on an F1 game so you can't miss that there's gonna be some more sprint mode dry tires on a wet track obviously getting career mode videos out basically every other day as well so you guys will have plenty to watch but today uh, in this newsy type video I'm gonna be talking about Felipe Massa who obviously today announced that he was gonna be retiring from Formula One at the end of 2016 now this you know obviously we want to say sort of collectively a thank you to Felipe Massa for what he's done for the sport, you know, he's really changed uh, things realistically and he's he's a nice guy, you know, he, I think he's quite hard to dislike, sometimes a little bit, you know, he blames people for accidents and stuff, but he's a, he's a nice guy, you know, and he's, he's always professional, even when he lost the championship in that heartbreaking manner in 2018, he stayed professional, uh, 2018, well, 2008, uh, he stayed professional and, you know, thank the crowd and whatever, and uh, he's been through a lot, so he's, uh, you know, that, that accident in 2009 as well, he's been a pleasure to have in the sport, but obviously his retirement opens up silly season, and for those that don't know what silly season is, it's basically where every driver in the universe gets linked to every team and every seat in the universe for the next season and uh, obviously when a seat becomes available this bandwagon starts to roll out and uh, a lot of people already have been linking Jensen Button to the seat. Now obviously what I'm going to talk about today is the various people that are linked with the seat, who I think should get the seat, why they should get the seat or why maybe they shouldn't want to get the seat or whatever and in the, in the comment section I want to know who you guys think will get the second William seat alongside Valtteri Bottas most likely for the 2017 season. Now I briefly mentioned it a moment ago, the first guy who's been linked with, you know, with Williams extensively even before Massa announced his retirement was Jensen Button. Now Jensen Button obviously started his career with Williams in 2000 when he made his debut in Formula 1 16 years ago and it'd be quite interesting, you know, obviously he entered the sport as a, a, as a rookie with Williams and then if he was to go to Williams for 2017 he'd most likely be ending his career there as well. Uh, because let's be honest we only expect one more season out of Jensen Button although we've been saying that for quite some time now um, so we'll have to see how that goes but yeah Jensen Button has been linked obviously with this seat again one more year realistically max in Formula 1 so it'd be, it would be a one year wonder realistically if he were to go to Williams but should he really go to Williams I mean you know he's at McLaren he's McLaren McLaren Honda is where he is at the moment obviously now that is a works team you know, all their efforts, all their time, man hours goes into them and them alone. That car, that McLaren Honda, everyone back at base who works on that Honda power unit is, is working to make that car better. There are huge advantages of being a works team. That's why Mercedes have romped away. That's why Ferrari have such a huge budget all the time. Does Jensen Button, you know, for his possibly his last season, does Jensen Button realistically want to go to Williams? Because the trend of those two teams is completely polar opposite. You know, McLaren Honda were awful last year. Now they're probably on the same level as Toro Rosso, which is, you know, quite a big thing, realistically. But on the other hand, Williams, who were arguably the second best team in 2014, have slipped below Ferrari, Red Bull, even arguably Force India this year. And with that trend continuing into 2017, and as far as I'm aware, the power unit staying the same, Williams could even drop below Toro Rosso and McLaren, you know, so he could potentially, if Jensen, uh, Jensen Button were to go to Williams, would potentially be make, making a step down. You know, I mean, at the moment, yes, it seems like a step up, a small one at that, you know, because I'd say Williams in the running order are just above McLaren, but for next season, that probably won't be the case. So should Jensen Button go to Williams? In my opinion, no. Will he? It seems like the most the most feasible option at the moment. It seems like the one that everyone is expecting. Obviously, if he were to go to Williams, that would open up uh, a seat at McLaren, and that would be a slam dunk seat for Stoffel Van Dorn, obviously, let's be honest. No one else would even be considered for that McLaren seat alongside Fernando Alonso if Jensen Button were to move to Williams. But, you know, let me know in the comments section whether you think Jensen Button should go there, whether he should switch, you know, uh, works McLaren Honda for the customer team that is 
uh, Williams Mercedes. Now, I'm going to sort of contradict myself a little bit here because the next guy that I'm going to talk about is Sergio Perez, who, as soon as Felipe Massa announced that he was retiring, was very much linked uh, with this with this William C. He's been linked with the Renault seat beforehand, assuming that one of Jolie and Palmer or Kevin Magnussen get ousted, but today he was linked with this William seat. Now, Sergio Perez isn't particularly tied down to a contract for next season, so uh, Force India may do a pretty good job to keep hold of him, obviously with the podiums and great results that he's had this season, by far outperforming Nico Hulkenberg, realistically, who's no shabby driver himself. But for Sergio Perez, you know, I talked down the, the, the career choice for Jensen Button, but actually this might be an okay career choice for Sergio Perez. I don't really feel as if it has a great outcome, a great advantage realistically, um, but you know, I mean, he's at a customer Force India team that struggle with budget realistically. Williams are probably gonna be better than Force India when it comes to, you know, the after the, the new regulations. Um, so maybe in the, in the short term, going from Force India to Williams is a good idea for him. However, if he was going to get a call from Renault, I would, if I was him, I would 100% take that instead. It's the same dynamic, you know, Renault are a works team, Force India and Williams are customer teams. At the end of the day, in the long term, you want to go with a works team, let's be honest. They're way more likely to succeed in the future, even if they're not as great now. So Sergio Perez obviously has been linked. He's great at getting the best out of, you know, average cars, but again, for him, to go from Force India to Williams is a bit of a sideways step uh, for him, realistically. Now, obviously, Jensen Button and Sergio Perez both have a lot of experience in the, uh, in, in the sport, but people like Alex Lynn, uh, who has also been linked with this seat, are, you know, would be coming in as rookies. Now, Alex Lynn is obviously the Williams development driver. As soon as a Williams seat becomes available, he has to be looked at, you know, automatically, because he is the next rung down. It's like Stoffel Van Dorn with McLaren, Esteban Ocon with Renault. They have to be looked at as potential. The problem for Alex Lynn is he's had a bang average season in GP2. At this point in the season, he's seventh in the championship. Last year, he finished sixth in the championship. So he hasn't, he hasn't, not, he's not only not progressed, but he's actually made a step down in GP2. Now, if he was going to be considered properly, he has to finish in the top three of this GP2 season. He has to show his worth. He's obviously got two wins this season, two podiums as well. But he, to be considered above the likes of Sergio Perez and Jensen Button, he has to be setting the world alight, and at the moment, he isn't. Now, for him, you know, a bit of a get-out-of-jail-free card would be Jensen Button going to Williams because the reality is Button would be there for the short term. Alex Lynn then has just got to be patient for 2017, have a good season in GP2, and then he'd be probably in a better position than he is now. But the key is that he'd have to have a good season in GP2, and I'm not talking coming sixth. I'm saying winning it or coming second, realistically. Otherwise, it's game over for him. And another person who's been considered a much younger driver... Uh, even than Alex Lynn is Lance Stroll, who's another Win uh, Williams development driver, currently romping away with the European Formula 3 championship. You know, whenever it comes to a driver this young, everyone will say, is he too young for Formula 1? Is the jump from Formula 3 to Formula 1 too large? At the end of the day, even back in 2001, Kimi Raikkonen did it, going from Formula 3 to Formula 1 in that 2001 Sauber. And of course, more recently and, you know, more uh, well-renowned, Max Verstappen went from Euro F3. He didn't even win F Euro F3, I don't think. I'm not entirely sure. And of course, went to Toro Rosso. Proved to be amazing. Him and Carlos Sainz bossed it. And this season, he's obviously won a race with Red Bull. He's proved that he was more than ready. You know, the old phrase is, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And Lance Stroll, in my opinion, is as good as Max Verstappen was at Formula 3 level. He's probably good enough, realistically, and probably in my opinion, has more talent than Alex Lynn. Uh, that sounds very crass, but in my opinion, that is the case. Um, Lance Stroll is doing just as well as Alex Lynn was back in the day, and he seems to have a more exciting potential. Alex Lynn has sort of stalled a little bit in GP2. That, however, Lance Stroll going to, to Williams would completely end Alex Lynn's hopes of a drive in Formula 1. You know, if someone that young is going to go to Williams and stay there for such a long time, especially when Valtteri Bottas is in the other seat. Bottas isn't going to be retiring anytime soon. A Lance Stroll going to Williams would basically end Alex Lynn's partnership with Williams. Of course, he already ended his partnership with Red Bull when he got jumped by Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen for 2015. And I think a similar thing would happen here. Even if Sergio Perez got the seat, I don't think Alex Lynn has the time to wait around. I could see him going off to Indy Lights or Indy Cars instead of staying in Formula One in that instance or, go, or trying to get into Formula One. So there we go. I've talked about the people who are linked with the seat. Felipe Massa obviously retiring. Jensen Button, Sergio Perez, Alex Lynn and Lance Stroll, the people that have link been linked with it so far. If you guys have any suggestions for who you think should get the seat, then drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear that, um, hear your opinions on who you think should get the seat and all that sort of jazz. 
feel free to hit the likes button if you did enjoy. Don't forget to leave some feedback on these types of videos, whether you want to see them more in the future or not. Subscribe if you're new around here as well for this sort of thing, hopefully, and F1 2016 content as well. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.